title of my message today is Art of Interpretation. The way Jesus interprets. Uh, let me read it, read it again. Art of Interpretation. The way Jesus interprets. The goal of my message today is not to give you some uh, uh, some nuggets of spiritual truth or the nuggets of the truths about God. But my goal is to challenge you to walk along with Jesus with an open mind and heart and learn from him and learn from his word as uh, he interprets his word and life the world around us so uh, let, let us start our message uh, about art of interpretation uh, today the beginning of my message as well as the conclusion of my message is the same so i'm starting with my conclusion that is like a, the musical scores i just came across musical scores in our old hymnal as a, and seeing that i felt if the words are not there i would not i i knew the words i knew the song that's why i was able to sing but uh, if i didn't know the song and if i have only the musical scores i may not be able to sing that and the musical notes they may be beautifully composed but unless somebody interprets them we would not be able to listen to the melodious music and musical scores and scriptures and our lives have a lot in common. The musical notes are required to be interpreted for melodious music. Scripture are to be interpreted to learn about the truths about God. And our life has to be interpreted so that we may understand and move forward in life. All of them are there uh, like the scores and most of the times as i said i start uh, my message beginning and the conclusion is the same most of the time in my life i really don't know how to interpret them just like how i don't know to interpret the musical scores let me start with a very basic and simple example and uh, with a, uh, let me start with the question what is that about you which is so unique and there is nobody in the world who can have a match with apart from the fingerprints you know fingerprints are something that those are unique and uh, and nobody else have the same fingerprints of course we understand that apart from them is there anything that makes you so different from others If you have any answers, feel free to just unmute yourself and you can share. Is there anything that is so unique about yourself, which nobody else have, which makes you special and different? Let me move forward. The answer is your story. You have a story. And nobody else in this world have your story. There may be some kind of similar stories, but nobody in this world have your story. You alone in this world have your story. And nobody else. And you are a story and you are continuously busy interpreting the events in your life to fit them into a narrative that you have been developing since before you can remember if you think about yourself from we, we don't know when we started having the conscience right but it started a point of time since then we would be continuously and constantly working with the experiences that we had and we try to compile them together so that it can it can fit or it can make a beautiful connected narrative from childhood onwards we will be having so many experiences and we will be learning a lot of stuff and all those memories we bring together and we intervene 
uh, we connect them. Uh, we connect all the memories. We compile all of them and we make a story and a class we, we call it, it is my story or sometimes we call it, it is my perspective. Our perspective, our story is completely based on how we narrated and connected all the memories that we had. And unconsciously from the earliest of earliest moments of consciousness, we try to find meaning in what happens to us. From the beginning, from every event, we try to find out what is the meaning of it? Why am I going through this? What does it mean? I mean, we try to find uh, a sense from everything that we are going through. And uh, we try to connect all the events to make as a meaningful narrative, as I said, and we try to connect all the narratives to try to find a sense in everything that we, uh, we went through. And as we, if we try to find out what is that connecting thread between all these experiences or all these memories, we'll find out that it is the self or I who is contemplating all the experiences and compiling and teaching us a narrative or teaching us a story about ourselves. The self is the common thread in all the experiences and the same self narrates the story. If we think about our life, most of the times we are, all the data that we have in our head, if you look at our memories, would be completely focused on ourselves. And the self, uh, and the self is the one who is uh, uh, experiencing the events and there is a self, the same self who is uh, narrating the story about ourselves. That is the reason I would like to say it is, no, it is not the fact that you have a story, but you are a story. Our self and uh, our story are both are completely interconnected. That's why your sense of self and your consciousness of who you are are inseparably linked to the narrative and the story you have been telling yourself. And in our lives, for a period of time, we learn from experiences and build our taste or perspective, and then we start interpreting or judging the events. From childhood, the moment we born, we will be experiencing so many things. We will be listening to our mother's voice, or we will be by the touch or sound or taste, with so many things, we will be collecting the data. We will be going through so many uh, events and experiences. From that moment, from the moment we were born to a point of time, we receive all the data that is around us. And it will be like a teacher and student relationship. We learn and uh, the, we, we learn from the events and experiences. And there comes to a point, all the data that we have received into ourselves will become our perspective. And from that point of time, any experience we have, we start interpreting that experience or event based on the perspective which we have built, which was completely depending and which was influenced by the experiences we had in the past. So through experiences, we come to a perspective and with that perspective, we will be interpreting and judging everything around us. Now, every new thing that happens needs to fit into the narrative that we have already uh, developed in our minds. As I said, from the beginning to a point of time, we started developing a narrative within ourselves. We started composing a perspective for ourselves. And uh, we started believing some, some, uh, some things like, you know, it can be called even belief, so, uh, uh, belief system. So it can be your story, it can be your perspective, it can be your belief system. From the beginning, due to the experiences, you come to your point. From that point of time, every event you face, you will interpret based on that. And if you experience anything in contradiction, we deconstruct it and reconstruct that experience and make it to conform with what we already believe. If you hear something different or something uh, unique, 
we, what we do we try to do is we try to judge it or interpret it in such a way we we do all sorts of surgeries and operations to the new perspective that we heard and we deconstruct it we break into parts and we try to reconstruct it taking uh, some statements from the beginning some statements from the end some things uh, some statements uh, from the middle and we try to use all those sentences and tries to we try to connect it in such a way so that the new perspective or new experience we are having may not contradict with what we are already believing uh, uh, let me let me speak to you very genuinely most of the times if people said i like somebody's message and most of the times we like somebody's message if they spoke something we all which we already know which we already believe we like the messages that we already know and if somebody spoke something different or a little little bit contradictory or little bit different from what you are believing and we break that perspective we try to fix it and to make sure it has to fit with my perspective if it's not fitting for christians they would say it can be heretical you know so that's what we, we do actually and we find some kind of security in that we find some kind of pride in that we cannot simply accept everything that is different from us i'm not asking us to be gullible but that is how we work that is how we interpret things that's how we understand and learn from that point of time after we prepare or after we composed our perspective or belief system that's how we are and that is the reason uh, we uh, we reconstruct it unconsciously with our narrative in mind and make sure that things new sorry uh, and make sure that this new meaning fits with the story that we have already told ourselves and that is the reason no two people have same experience at the same event if two people went to have uh, went to attend or be part of a particular event same event and both of them will come back with two different perspectives nobody will come back with the same experience okay two of them will come with two different experiences it is because we don't understand or accept or experience the things the way they are but we are uh, we understand accept or experience the things the way we are we, it is not like we don't experience them however they are so we experience however we are right so because of that there is no human in this world who can have an objective experience about anything that's the reason some children some people like mangoes some people don't like mangoes is it mango bad or mango is bad or good we don't know the first experience what a boy or child had with mangoes if he a if he had eaten a good sweet mango he may like it and from that moment he may start liking mangoes and if you give mango he will be happy and he says uh, if mango dila if mango items are there then he says the meal is great if a person who uh, who ate who ate a sour mango for example and he may not like mangoes at all and for him the same grand meal is a punishment to him so it's all like you know the mango is not the problem the problem is with our first experiences and based on that how we built our perspective or our image we composed our story and with that we are judging it and you will be doing the same thing with my someone now you are listening what am i speaking and whatever i whatever i am speaking you must be taking the sentences and you must be deconstructing it and reconstructing it and you will be doing something in your own head even now the same thing we do always as we continue to develop our narratives we find our security in being right about our story or our interpretation some people are there if we say we need to if somebody come if two people are there working on a project 
and uh, maybe some lead is there and he says this is how we are going we will we want to do it and if the other person suggests no no, no not this way we'll try some other way and this lead he finds it so difficult to accept the other method to execute the program he says this is how i learned this is how i liked and this is how it should go and if we do like this only it will succeed other person may be saying in a different man different way that also may get a result in a success but we feel what the method i said only is going to work out and we will not be ready to leave that because we find some kind of security and safety and confidence in our way of doing things so we always try to impose and say this is only works and you do um, and we tell the other person you don't understand the thing what i understood only is correct that's how we go about and it is because the contradiction does just is not just a contradiction of facts but this is a contradiction against ourselves we expressed a perspective which is right or wrong that's the second point you have we have a perspective and somebody else brought another perspective which may sound contradictory as we are discussing with them we feel uh, if uh, to accept the other person's perspective is to uh, you know to uh, what we call to judge my perspective is wrong and it is it doesn't just go with the facts about that perspective about uh, but we feel it we so very hurt to accept that we may be wrong that is the very reason i still remember i had conversations with so many people about the various theological subjects as we are discussing they get offended when we speak about to speak a different perspective because it is triggering their uh, the very self actually as i said it is because our narrative of our life is uh, uh, the story that we have is not just our story but we are a story and our perspective is not a perspective that we have but we ourselves is that very perspective uh, that very perspective actually that is the very reason when we bring some kind of different perspective or different teaching they get offended they get angry it is because the contradiction is not just about the facts for them the contradiction is about themselves as the and when we encounter contradiction we try to we try our best to protect protect ourselves by avoiding it or even we go to an extent of willful ignorance or if we are humble enough we repent and yield to it when we are hearing a different perspective or about various subjects we try our best as i said deconstructing and reconstructing we try our best to oppose and uh, sometimes we bring all our reason sometimes we find the security and find we find the reason from see such a huge denomination is believing this and you are telling it is wrong all those thousands of people do you think are the fools my grandmother did it my father did it my grandfather did it my brother did it all of them uh, all of them have done this are you saying uh, they are all of them are wrong you know that's how we try to protect we try to do our best to protect what we are already believing and we even go to an extent sometimes we find it uh, our ego will get hurt to yield to the teaching or the other contradictory perspective that we are hearing or interpretation that we are hearing so we may even tend to go towards willful ignorance we understand it we find all their facts only are right but still i don't believe it doesn't make sense to me i heard so much i heard thousands of scriptures i got enough references i got enough philosophical historical theological archaeological evidences but still the experience i have is only right the conviction i have is only right there we become willfully ignorant we want to neglect it and we go to an extent saying don't listen to them anymore or if we are humble enough we may repent and yield to the new perspective that we are 
please this is how we interpret i'm not asking i'm asking uh, you to be gullible and accept everything that we hear no we have to deconstruct we have to reconstruct but we should have the courage we should be able enough to yield if the other perspective sounds connect to us if the facts are now proving it let me in this that is how we interpret and let me tell you a good news in that situation okay so let's see the situation we have is this have you ever uh, noticed how right you are have you ever thought of it when we are having discussions most of the times our mind constantly tells what i am saying is only right even a single iota of doubt doesn't come to us saying i may be wrong we don't accept every we believe everything that we speak is right and this is what happened in my life i was uh, i studied in a telugu medium school uh, till 12th i studied in telugu and i need to start speaking in english and somebody helped me with this uh, in thing i wanted to speak english but i don't know to speak fluently and i don't know proper grammar also <coughs> then i asked the person i really want to learn and he said if you want to learn and to speak english confidently you start thinking in it then i started thinking in it and he told me if you start thinking in it you will be able to speak with confidence because your mind says whatever you think is right we never think we may be wrong we think we are absolutely correct so i started thinking in english then whether right or wrong but i got a confidence to speak and i'm speaking i know i make so many mistakes even now i make so many grammatical errors after coming to gci only i realized i, I could see uh, the mirror i could see myself in the mirror and then i started learning and uh, definitely i for myself i could find some kind of uh, growth or improvement in myself from the day from 2014 but i was always confident it is because i started thinking in english and i am speaking so whatever we think we feel it is right we never think it can be wrong so we always feel we are absolutely right so the in that state the gospel is this because in such state the gospel is the powerful declaration declaration and the gloriously good news that is you are wrong we may be thinking we are perfectly absolutely right and the gospel to us is that we may be wrong though there may be some good things in our narratives which we built from childhood but still the word, the message you are wrong is still a gospel it is because god wants to tell us that there is a bigger narrative a bigger story and you are larger than the story you have told to yourself from childhood we might have told our story and at gospel we encounter god and he tells your story is not small even there is a bigger story bigger narrative you are part of it and it is much bigger than what you are thinking that's what god wants to tell us you know if you think about um, uh, sorry through the gospel we discover a whole new story a whole new narrative a narrative that sets us free so that our future does not have to continue the story we told ourselves till now if you think about the future if you ask somebody a question what do you think how your future would be you may say my future would be like so and so let me tell you, the past is something which is no more a reality we had so many experiences and future is something which is not at a reality uh which is not at a reality and present is a journey from which is no more a reality to which is not at a reality and most of the times we think when we talk about future we think our future would be repetition of our past it is because of the narrative we you know, we put in our head from the past experiences and we think the future is going to be the repetition of it so that is the reason in our narrative in our interpretation whatever we got in the past that gives a very narrow future to us that gives only your future would be like this your future should be more like your past 
But when we encounter gospel, when we come to Christ, and uh, we discover a whole new story. <coughs> and till now, there is a future, but it's not. It's it. Uh, it's not. Uh, sorry, it's it's bound actually. Uh, typing error. Now there is a story. So till now we have a future, but it is uh, bound by the limitations of our past. As I said, we think our future is a repetition of our past. But when we come, the gospel is this: when we come, when we come to Christ, we come to a narrative or a future where uh, the future will be of infinite possibilities because our God is a God of infinite possibilities. And if we consider uh, the word journey can be used metaphorically for life. In Bible, it is never from familiar to unfamiliar, but the other way. That is unfamiliar to the familiar. If we look at the stories in the Bible, God never took people from familiar places to unfamiliar places. From to, to uh, family, He did not take them to familiar things. He the faith starts with unfamiliar. Like uh, God came to Abraham. Uh, sorry, uh, like like in the stories of uh, Abraham, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, David, Mary, and Mary and Joseph, and of course, when God came to Abraham, uh, God was asking Abraham to follow him to a place which is not familiar to him. And he, in fact, he didn't even know where is he going. He's going into total unfamiliarity. And look at the life of Jacob. It is the same. He was going to his father-in-law's place. He didn't know what is going to happen. That he has to return, but he didn't know what is uh, what is going to happen. So completely into unfamiliar things. Look at the life of J Joseph. He didn't have any idea what is happening with his life. His life was from the beginning completely into unfamiliar things. The life of Moses, the life of David, shepherd boy, and life of Mary and Joseph. If you remember Mary and Joseph. When Mary encountered the angel, it said, it's, "How can it be possible? Uh, I'm still a virgin. How can I, how can I give birth to a boy?" She found it. It's uh, it's not possible because of the familiar experiences that she has. And John chapter two, we see after Jesus grew up, she says, uh, "You know, uh, go and do whatever he says. He is going to solve your problem." In the beginning, she started with uh, the uh, interpreting what is happening in her life with the familiar things, which is the physical and biological and scientific things that she is a virgin, she cannot give birth. Here comes at the wedding. She, she started at unfamiliar thing there, and to come to a familiar experience in the wedding, where she says, "You go and listen to Jesus. Even he can turn the air into wine, or water into wine." Or what he does, I don't know, but he is going to do that and he is going to solve it. That's what we find in the Bible. All the journeys from unfamiliar to familiar. That's why God wants us to leave the familiar and come to the unknown. He wants us to leave our certainty and come to his possibility. But unfortunately, we find some kind of sense of safety in the certainty. So in certainty of things that we know, we find security. But God always calls us to come to possibly leave certainty and come to possibilities. The example of Abraham and Hagar is a great example. That there is a certainty. Abraham and Hagar can get children. And God calls them to something possibility. Abraham and Sarah getting children is only a possibility in millions. So God called from certainty to possibility. He wants us to leave the place of comfort, justice, and security of what we know and follow him into the realm of faith. It is going to open up new possibilities that we have never seen before. God who makes all things new, the God of unlim unlimited possibilities, can take you beyond the limited narrative and that you have been telling yourself so far and one good example i would like to bring before you and then would like to close that is in that we find in luke chapter 24 13 to 32 uh, 
here Jesus is interpreting, uh, Jesus comes and interprets various events. It is not just related to the text, it relates to life, how we interpret our lives, life, sorry, our life events, and how we interpret our story. So you, we all read this story very well. Uh, the two men who were traveling from Jerusalem to Emmaus, they were traveling and discussing about uh, the events about Jesus resurrection and one point one word I would like to inter bring to your notice that is at word 17 and he said to them what uh, sorry as they were traveling they were discussing Jesus joined them in the journey and he asked them what are you talking about then uh, <coughs> uh, then the word 17 it says and he said to them what kind of conversation is that you have with one another as you walk and are sad. These two people are discussing about the resurrection and they became sad. This is actually the Greek word used there uh, is kutropos, which is the same word used in Genesis chapter 14 in Greek translation of uh, uh, Old Testament. Uh, you remember Genesis chapter 40, 40 where Baker uh, and Butler of Pharaoh were discussing they had uh, uh, dreams and they did not find anybody to interpret so their faces were dull and they were sad this is the same thing through you by john luke is connecting us to that uh, i believe so these people were discussing about it and they were confused and they did not have a perspective so that is where jesus goes and intervenes and he wants to give perspective in other words jesus he just start joined there to interpret the events to interpret the scriptures to them just like joseph, joseph interpreted the dreams for these butler and baker and luke chapter 24 13 to 20, 32 we find these people they have at least five facts of uh, what happened in jerusalem and uh, it is written from verse 18 onwards then one whose name was cleopas answered and said to him are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which happened here in these days? And he said to them, what things? So they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet. This is the first truth they, fact they knew about him. He was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all men. And how the chief priests and the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified. Second fact. Third fact. But we were hoping that he was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, beside all this, today is the third day since these things happened. And the fourth fact they got is yes. And certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. And the fifth fact is when they did not find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said to who said he was alive. So first thing they learned, the uh, fact they knew was uh, is a prophet and my mighty prophet uh, or son of god or whatever you take and uh, they also found uh, he was killed by the chief priest and the third fact they knew about was uh, <coughs> they expected that he is going to redeem israel and the fourth thing is his no his body was not found he is risen and the fifth thing is he was seen by somebody these are the five facts they got but they were not able to interpret them it is because of what they were already being taught. They got from Jewish beliefs that uh, Jesus cannot be the Messiah because he ha he was hung on the tree. Cursed is everyone who was who hung on the tree. And they have so many Old Testament scriptures which they have because of the uh, and uh, Old Testament beliefs because of which they were not able to accept the resurrection happen according to uh, Pharise uh, sorry Sadducees resurrection doesn't occur does, uh, does not I mean there is no resurrection according to Pharisees at the end of the day the resurrection is going to take place but suddenly this moment Jesus rose again from the dead which does not fit with their belief and which does not fit with the majority or teachings of the main religions of those days the Greeks and the Romans for them there is no resurrection matter is all uh, that is existing you know so according to Jews according to Gentiles the resurrection does not make any sense they have these philosophical theological and understandings and that was the perspective and they are trying to interpret the events 
that happened in Jerusalem during the resurrection of Jesus Christ and which they could not do because they were not ready to leave what they had. They were, as they're interpreting, their interpretation was going wrong and they were not able to interpret and they were totally confused and very sad. That is the reason, that is the moment Jesus started and trying to help them by interpreting the scripture and the events. So that is what art of interpretation. So they got, they got all the events, but they did not have a better narrative that attaches all these events into a meaningful narrative. That's what I called. They're confused. They could not uh, understand what to do with them. And uh, sometimes, some, we are, sometimes we also will be in such situation. We don't understand how to connect various scattered events happened in life and ask why. Various things happen in our life. Sometimes we don't understand why things are happening the way they are happening. We also may be in the same way. We have all those events, all those experiences, all the data, but we, do, we could not connect them in a meaningful narrative. Why always am, why am I suffering always? Why all these things are happening to me only? Because we could not connect those uh, events in a meaningful narrative. That's why Jesus loves and gets into conversations with us. How he loved to get in conversation with these two guys. He loved to enter in conversation with us also. And these conversation can happen in any way. We should never undervalue the opportunities we have to converse. They may be little, non-theological, theological, philosophical. They can be sometimes even about cooking. Sometimes cooking can help us and that may, thoughts about cooking may change our perspective and they can, it can put our things in a perspective. Or sometimes it can be a heated arguments or conversations which we don't like to be part of. And we are, because it is those very conversations Jesus interprets our story with us. When we are kind of confused and when we have these things, the little conversations we are going to have are going to make big sense. We just need to be vigilant and open because that's where Jesus can jump in in our conversations and interpret our story to ourselves. So, the art of interpretation, what happened? Then uh, we know the story. Jesus uh, told them, Oh foolish ones and slow to do, slow of heart to believe in all those prophets have spoken. And he started explaining to them from beginning till the end about all the scriptures. In other words, he started deconstructing the theology and he started reconstructing it. He was interpreting everything that they were believing and because they found something contradictory to what they're already believing and they found it difficult to accept. So what Jesus is doing is to breaking their perspective so that they may be able to accept the new challenge that is ahead of them where Jesus is interpreting their perspective, number one, and number two, connecting them to the new events happen and to the new narrative where they can, which they can understand. So you know the story, that is the reason I'm not going into it. But one thing we find in this uh, thing that in this uh, conversation, that is at the, uh, so Jesus spoke about the scriptures at the end of it, Jesus acted as if uh, he has to leave them. And uh, then they said, oh, it's already late. Why don't you dine with us? Okay. Jesus is such a preacher. He doesn't force his perspective on people. He just connects things, connects things and he puts things in con in its context and leaves or leaves it open to us. And he asks us, you make a commitment for yourself. That's the reason he explained and uh, he just wanted to. He, In fact, it is written, he acted as if he has to leave. Okay, that word, uh, you will find it in the footnotes. He acted as if he has to leave. Purposefully, he did that because he doesn't want to force his perspective about whatever he spoke about the scriptures. Uh, uh, in other words, he interpreted their own theological perspective. Then, um, uh, so he acted, they asked him to stay with him. Then Jesus broke the bread. Isn't it surprising? These two guys asked him to come with Jesus, asked Jesus to come with him. And uh, uh, suddenly the guest became the host. These people asked him to dine with him. They were supposed to break the bread. If somebody come to your house, who will break the bread? Obviously you will break the bread. 
or even in journey if you're packing you pack something and going you ask somebody to join what will you do you will open your boxes here here suddenly jesus is breaking the bread the moment he broke the bread these people's the eyes were opened then uh, they, they then jesus disappeared they realized that it is jesus and it is something that jesus jesus as of john luke wants us to focus it and to understand so jesus puts things in its context but it does, he does not compel uh, to make any commitment their eyes were blinded in the beginning and he can stay with them physically for a while with them but why did he disappear jesus can just after their eyes open he can stay with them for two or three minutes no because they could see physically jesus there and they would be able to believe everything that was happening in jerusalem but jesus chose to disappear immediately the moment their eyes were open it is because uh, it is because or it is because uh, he, while he was speaking their hearts were burning they realized jesus through the scripture they realized jesus in the spirit so they knew jesus in the spirit when they knew jesus in the spirit they don't require him to be seen physically anymore that's a real i i be i think this way and you can have a different perspective for yourself so since they, they experience jesus in the spirit and through the scriptures he he doesn't require to be physically there and uh, john chapter 14 verse 19 to 20 says a little while no while longer and the world will see me no more but you will see me because i live you will live also and that day you will know that i am uh, you will know that i am in my father and you in me and i in you this is that very moment these people realize jesus in the spirit the moment they realize that jesus said uh, jesus is in them that's why they don't need to look for any physical body uh, to find jesus they don't require jesus to be physically present there for them to believe the resurrection of jesus because they realized that jesus is in them as john said in 14 jesus said in john 14 19 to 20 and that's what apostle paul writes in second corinthians 5 16 therefore from now on when we regard no one according to the flesh even though we we have known christ according to the flesh yet now we know him thus no longer they don't want to know him physically they want to know him in the spirit which happened to these people so the encounter with jesus will reconstruct an interpreter uh, uh, reconstruct our interpretation of scriptures or perspective or story and deconstructs and reconstruct our perspectives to his story sorry typing error that's why they return to jerusalem their direction has been changed they were going somewhere probably because of fear they may be running from jerusalem but now their perspective changed so they're going back and to be witness to jesus these encounters can happen in our casual talk with coffee talking uh, during a talk during a morning walk talk with parents and children at home while as we're talking and it can be with friends but uh, it can be by personal bible study even while listening to music or even to during a sermon these things can happen so in conclusion what i would like to tell is this god is always interested in dialogue with us and scripture is a conversation where your contribution is invited when you are reading scripture you open your heart and contribute that's where we feel the presence of god as what happened in the on the way to emmaus to these people they opened the scripture and they were they presented their perspective as they did that the holy uh, jesus expressed his perspective and whatever happened there you can imagine the same thing happens here scripture is a conversation actually as you are reading uh, and if we bring our thoughts and holy spirit works there in bringing perspective to us your story is great sorry your story is greatly valuable and god through the scriptures draws you into a conversation and interprets your story when we read a scripture as jesus interprets them we will be able to understand our own life.
it interprets our story actually. When we come to scripture, we'll encounter as we, we in the light of the Holy Spirit as Jesus leads, we find who we are. This is more than an intellectual pursuit, but it is God entering into our story because Jesus is risen and have included our story into his. Our story can have infinite possibilities because our God is a God of infinite possibility. Through the incarnation, Jesus entered into human story and because of his resurrection. Now, what is the future of humans? Future of humans is not, uh, uh, what is this, global warming that brings devastation or a great end that is the end of all humanity, a great extinction or another big bang. But because Jesus entered into our humanity and because of his resurrection, we have new possibilities. Our, uh, we are not, our hope, sorry, our uh, future is not that we extinct, but even individually, our future is that we are going to have glorious life as Jesus. We realize this when we let Jesus to interpret ourselves as we participate in conversation with him through the scriptures. So I would like to conclude my message also with the same thing I started. As for me, I've understood the scriptures in my life are like this course. I really don't know how to interpret them. So I look unto Jesus and ask him, pray to him, God, come to me in conversation. Help me open my hearts and minds and ears so that I may be able to hear you in the little conversations that I'm having with people or at the time that I'm spending in the scripture. You come and with your scripture and your spirit, you interpret me and help me that I may find myself in the biggest story, which is yours, and may find a life of freedom and a life of infinite possibilities. Thank you so very much uh, for uh, patiently listening to me. <laughs>